Hmm, I think it's working. Okay, we're gonna finish setting up. And yeah, let's finish setting up and hopefully we're good to go. Right, hang on, I'm gonna just finish setting up. Um, what kind did we make last time? I can't even remember, let me have a look. We did a blue, right? Other colours too. Didn't do the green. Oh, we did the blue, didn't we? Which is still in there. So I need the green and the magenta, I think. I think. Uh, I don't know. I think it's going to be green and magenta. Right. I need my bottle of water and I need a drink and I need, what do I need? My palette knives and my paint binder. Let's go grab it. And write your drink. I will remember everything eventually. Right. Pigment. I think that's under my desk. Ooh. I'm gonna get stuck set up properly. I'll take that writing off the screen. See if I can find what I want. Oops. There it is. I might have a little jar going actually. Let me search. What's the bit rate that video? Oh, we've got quite a good frame rate drop. We've only got five frame rate drop. That's pretty good. Let's see if I can find the jar. A pigment, because I'd rather use it up. First, then. I need to sort out my pigment drawer. My pigment drawer is so messy. Um, Let me take the image off the screen. Um, yeah, so let's have a look, see if I can find it in my pigment drawer. Nope. It's not the malachite I was just using. No, I'll compare that to the one that I had been using. That one exactly. Is that 
the same thing. Yeah, same product code. Hmm, I saw it. I'm sure it's a little bit different. Never mind. Uh, let's have a look. That's Jade. Don't want Jade. Let's take some of these out. Especially the big ones. Or some stuff on top. Oh, I still have some micro pigments. I need to figure out when I'm going to use and how I'm going to use. Did I do this one? No, I've not used this one for anything. It's got a lot here that I've not actually used. Um, makes me sound really wasteful. Uh, Russian green, not quite the colour we're after. I'm going to look for all this and find this in my other drawer. I just know it. <laughs> oh, oh, is that it? No, that's Bavarian green. Um, I'm convinced I had another jar of it. That's Azurine. Well, I can't find it in this one, so it might be in my other one. Let's have a look. It might be in the other one. Oh, where have I just put that back on? Oh, hi Nettie, how are things going? If the stream's looking weird or the colours aren't looking too good, give me a shout and I will change it in further editing software. Have I opened that? No, let's see what I did. Didn't think there was a lot. Of let's shove this out of the way. I have too much pigment. Far too much pigment. Ah, ha, ha. This is heavy. Stay. I don't want to touch the bags because the bags are really messy. I was saving up jam jars to can them all into, but I never really got around to it. Some of them I've decanted. What's that blue? Have I, over, have I even opened some of this? Oh, there's some gold mica. Yellow, which I'm going to try and avoid touching because it's really messy. No, I think I must have used up all the old green then, which is really unusual. I'm convinced I have more. What's this color? Oh, that has been opened. Yeah, let's just shovel this back because I'm going to make a mess. Ugh. Yeah, let's just start the new jar. I've also got a cardboard box under my desk with pigment in too. <laughs> Oh god, excuse me, sorry. I think I'm still digesting lunch. <laughs> that is looking really washed out on the screen. Let's see if I can fix it. It's still because I also have... Um, that's a bit better. Warm this up. Is it the brightness needs to be turned down? Contrast needs to be turned up. Oh, that's a bit contrast. It's really difficult to do. Um, or is it the maybe the light is too bright? Let's turn the light down a tiny bit. Is that better? Oh, that's a bit too dark. Turn it up a bit more. It's very really difficult to get right. I think that is not a bad colour. Let me know, is that good? Do you put it brighter, darker? I'm not really sure. <laughs> Sounds like you need to come down to uh, Wiltshire, Netic, and sort out my pigment drawers. <laughs> but yeah, my studio is pretty disorganized in general. My partner helped me sort it out um, a little while ago. Some of it's still tidy. But some of it's still got messy again. <laughs> I'm just quite a cluttered person, I think, in general. So yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we'll start with pink making. I was going to do some painting this week, but I didn't get around to um, doing any, an illustration or anything. I didn't have time to do it. And I need to catch up on some paint making because I want to have some paints ready by the end of May to go on sale. 
So we'll start. I've got to make three more colours. I'm hoping to get two of them done today. Oh, hi, box of paint. How is it going? That's not good. Where did that powder come from? If it's too dark on the screen, let me know and I'll brighten it. So let's go with one. Do we go with one teaspoon of this? It's quite a big teaspoon. Let's go with one and a half. I'm feeling, um, I don't have any half pans to put this in at the moment because I've run out. Um, but I've got a Jackson's order on the way. It should be here early in the week, so I think it's coming Tuesday. Because I ordered enough that they did next day delivery. But with obviously the weekend and the bank holidays, it's been delayed a little bit. Or oh, high box paint. How is things going? How are the kittens? Dogs, cats? <laughs> yeah, I'm not a big lover of organisation <laughs> and organising things. I think it's a good idea when I start organising something. And then I very, very quickly regret it. <laughs> a bit of cloth to wipe that box, let that jar down. I keep forgetting that you guys are mirrored. <laughs> so this is going to take a lot of paint binder. So I'm going to start quite heavy with two. I know from experience this takes a lot of binder. And this is a fresh batch of binder that I made in the week. I've got quite a lot of painting to do actually because I've got to make paints for um, Patreon as well, my Patreons. I've not started on that for April yet, so I need to get on and do that. How is everybody's Sunday and Easter going? We started on our chocolate Easter eggs on Friday, so <laughs> we've eaten way too much chocolate. And this is a pain in the butt pigment to mix in. So yeah, if anybody wants a challenging pigment to work with and you're paint, into paint making, I recommend this one. <laughs> Hopefully next week I will get back on the painting. I remember to do up an illustration. I'm not, I, part of me wants to do gouache like do more gouache painting, but um, I wouldn't know what to illustrate. Like gouache is a bit different from watercolor. I have got a really tiny brush arriving with my Jackson's order, so that will help a little bit with the gouache, getting some details in, I'm hoping. I need to come up with some designs really for things like keychains and some bookmark designs for the my Etsy shop that I'm going to plan on opening in the summer, which is not very far away at all. So I really need to get working on it. I should have recorded it really, but oh well. I still got some postcard, um, some um, some bookmarks I need to laminate, so I might record that and. Maybe show myself making some prints. Yeah, I like being organised and I do like getting myself organised, but because I know it doesn't last very long, I find it a bit defeating. The colour's actually not looking too bad on camera, actually. It's a little bit dark, but perhaps I need to turn the light up the notch. Um, let's try that. Uh, you got the cats upstairs, the dogs could go out in the garden, enjoy the sunshine. Yeah, my parents popped over this morning to drop off some Easter eggs. And obviously Lyra doesn't like people, so she hides the second anybody comes over. So she was hiding, which is a real shame because I think that's 
I think she's one the one that they really want to have a cuddle with, but she hides. So it was just Loki. And he was, of course, even he was a bit nervous with all the attention. He's not used to it. That's the thing though with animals, they're all getting used to having not so many people around. So when more people start um, showing up, it confuses them and they get a bit nervous. Yeah, mine are going to stay indoors, even if I moved somewhere where I have outdoors. I might have, I might set up an enclosed garden, but I don't want them free roaming outside because there's cars and all sorts of things that they can have, like they can catch fleas and other illnesses and things from outside. Lyra is actually going in this week to be spayed, so I'm going to be feeling nervous this week. I'm sure she'll be all right, but I'm just nervous because she's quite nervous herself and quite quiet and shy when it comes to other people, so I'm slightly worried. The Mercy Snake Immortal Stella. Is that for when she was spayed? Yeah, my mum's already warned me that she might be a bit um out of it. Like when we got Loki home, it was the same day. Obviously, when he got done, it was just it's quite a simply knock him out for like you know forty five minutes and just remove his bits. But she's got to be fully cut open to obviously remove all her tubes and everything all her pipes, um, so that they'll probably be put under stronger anaesthetic. And they might have to give us as well some, like, recovery meds, more than what, obviously, they put him under. Like, with him, he didn't even notice that he was, um, that he came home missing anything. Like he was completely oblivious, like he came home, was him his normal self, exploring everything, getting into everything. Because he's quite confident anyway, and got plenty of gutsy, I guess is the way to put it, he's got plenty of attitude. Where she's quite shy and quite quiet in comparison, so. That and I think with the meds, I don't think she'll do it too brilliantly with. I don't know why, but I just get this kind of vibes that she will struggle. Yeah, I'm gonna say Loki was like nothing happened the same day he had his done in the morning. And I think my mum brought him home early afternoon around three, four o'clock. I got home about six o'clock. And yeah, he was his normal self. No change whatsoever, didn't even notice anything. This is such a messy pigment. I can really see there's like little bits of powder on the edge of my desk. So I think I may try and wipe those up because it's bugging me. 
And I know for a while if I touch them, it will be making a big mess everywhere. Because we're near enough, near enough all mixed in. And I need to set my straps into my tub. Because otherwise I'm going to be getting them, them dipping them in the paint and getting that everywhere. Uh, no, so your 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 girl was doped don't up for like a week. Yeah, I think I think it will take like a day or two to fully recover. Obviously, for all the girl ladies, it's a bit um. It's obviously more intrusive, isn't it? The surgery. It's more serious surgery and more intrusive, so it probably is a bit worse for her, for the girls anyway. Oh, hi, Epic Art. How are things going? I hope everyone's been eating lots of chocolate. <laughs> right, so let's mix a little bit of water with that because it's quite thick. Uh, this is, ignore the bottle. This is not um, lush it doesn't, Aroma water toner. It's um reused. It's a reused bottle. <laughs> it's just distilled water in it. Making your paint mixture really runny with water, diluting it, makes it easier to mold. If you've got a really painful pigment like this one, makes it easier to grind. And it's not really going to do anything to affect the paint. Let's start. Oh, hi, Chris Darla. How, how, how's it going? How are things where you are? If this color's not showing very well up on the stream, on the, on the screen, where your career tomorrow is, because I didn't think I mentioned it, it's golden green PY139. So it's a nice bright greenish yellow. It does look pretty dirty yellow on the screen. Well, at least on my screen it does. I do need to order more pigments from Jackson's really and Cornellison's and Master Pigments, but <laughs> one money, two timing, and three I don't need it quite yet. We've just booked this morning our flights for our summer holiday, so fingers crossed it all goes ahead and it's all gonna be fine. <laughs> Does look really dark on camera, it looks like mud. <laughs> Can promise you it's green. <laughs> I need to try and find a way to save the settings in OBS, but it resets it every time that I open it, which is a pain in the butt. Yeah, it's definitely kind of a Queen Gold colour, it has many shades to it. Like, obviously when you paint it really thick and concentrated, it does look really dark, like a golden green-brown, I guess. But if you dilute it, it does go quite yellowy.
but yeah, we'll see what it's like when I swatch it later. And see what kind of colour it turns out like. It's been a while since I've made this paint. I think I've only ever made it once, maybe, maybe twice. It's a pigment that you get quite a lot of paint from. Like a very little bit goes a long way. I kind of probably will have to add more paint binder to this. But it's one of those a bit like magenta or phthalo blue or phthalo green. You need to add more binder to the mix than what you think. Yeah, I don't know if you guys can see that on the board there. That sort of golden yellow, I don't think it's going to still show as kind of like a mustardy colour or a brown colour rather than yellow, but that colour there, that's what it can come out like. Let's add a bit more. Paint, but I don't think it's going to need it. PG51, what colour is that? I can't remember. I'm trying to struggle what that is off the top of my head. PG51, is that like a green colour? Cobalt green? Or turquoisey cobalt green? Oh yeah, it did show up on camera, the yellow. I'm watching, I'm playing, it was also playing on YouTube, like I've got it on my, it's called a, oh, what do I call it? It's called a control room on YouTube live. Um, I can also play the video as it's going out to you guys as well. So I can see it on my streaming software, which is OBS, or I can watch it on YouTube. Um, and it's said to have, I don't know if it's YouTube or OBS that's done it. I think it's a mixture of both. It has got like a like a 10 second delay. So what I'm seeing on screen is 10 seconds after I said anything. So for me to see what it looks like to you guys, I've got a bit of a wait. How is the video? Frame rate is really good. It's only dropped like 2% frame rate, which is good. It's about every half a minute or so, you're just getting a little stir and it's not a bad one, I don't think. Victoria Green, I think the name is the name of the box. It's the jade like colour. Ultramarine with granulation. Wow. Where did that pigment come from? Or is that another one that your your other half got you? There are also some really strange you get really unique pigments off of Etsy, I noticed. There's some like strange Vivian lights on there, but you have to be careful because obviously you don't know how um, reliable it is. Some, uh, some, you don't know if they've mixed it with anything like a synthetic pigment as well, or any any additives or any fillers or anything. Like we were talking last week that Sennelier added, oh, thank you, added um, marble dust to their pigment. And I think there's another company somewhere else that added marble, not marble dust, but something else to it. I have got some really, someone was really kind of and sent me this week some strange and discontinued crema pigments. Some pigments from crema that were discontinued. I can't remember what they were called, but they're really weird ones. I don't know if they're hues or what, but. So I think I might mold those and offer them to Patreons as part of their monthly dark card reward. I think they would enjoy it. I don't know if I've got enough because it's obviously I don't have very much of it. I don't know if I want to use it to sell any pans of. I might do some limited sets maybe if there would be the interest for it. But I would also feel bad about doing it because obviously the person that sent it to me has sent it to me kindly and for free. So I don't know if I should be trying to make money from it. <laughs> don't know if that's um, a, I don't know, what's it called? Not quite a decent thing to do. <laughs> I did it once with another person, um, 
Katie from Kwartz sent me some man magenta that she didn't like. She ordered the wrong one. And I sold that. I like the paint of that. I didn't feel too bad about them because she, she didn't like it and she didn't want it. Like she was just gonna throw it away. But this one I feel a bit, bit I would feel a bit bad about selling because it's a discontinued pigment and it's obviously a bit more rarer and yeah, I'd feel a bit more guilty about using it. So so I might just have it limited for um, patrons on the, their dark cards that they get every month. Um, so the colour that you've got, the J colour came from Rublev and he picked the one, it's almost like Crimean green light. Ooh. I like granulating paints. I don't really paint with them though. I don't like them in, I like them in my um, illustration work, but in my like fine work, like the botanical work I do, I don't like granulation. So yeah. It's a bit of a I actually have two granulating paints on my palette, ultramarine blue and cerulean blue. They don't get used very much <laughs> in my florals, but they do in my general illustration. Ask them, maybe that's a good idea I could ask them. I'd have to have a look how much pigment there is there properly. I've got the bag here, it's actually on the floor. So I think she said that it was her read of a note. I need to reply to her. She only this one came through the other day. Oh, so it was originally 50 grams of each colour, but she said she sent a bit more. I mean, not to sound really like, ungrateful, but there's not... There's obviously some colour here, but there's not like a ton of it. There's not like that giant jar I had at the beginning. So if I even use this much, it would only get a couple of pans at most out of it. So it might make some limited sets. But I'm going to try and focus on it having it for Patreon dot cards, their monthly rewards. I think. I think they'd appreciate that. And as well, I'm not technically selling it, so I feel not too guilty. Um. Uh, oh, hi, Calvin. How how are things going? Um. No, this is PY one twenty nine, so close, but a slightly different. Same sort of family, but a little bit different. But she's also a paint maker. I think she's not been doing it very long. I can't remember who it's from, from off the top of my head. It'll be on my phone conversation somewhere on my Instagram. But I don't have my phone with me at the minute because my partner wants to watch Netflix. And last time my partner watched Netflix and used the general Wi-Fi, um, it might have caused my stream to suffer. Like my frame rate like dropped massively. It went from like about 10% frame rate drop to like 50. <laughs> so it causes it issues. So I've set my phone up with as a hotspot using my internet data. So you can at least watch Netflix on that without upsetting uh, what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, what colors did they even send? Um, so they sent, it's called Mode Blue or Fashion Blue. Uh, pigment information in question mark is PB27. I mean, it's not going to be super accurate on camera, but you can guys can kind of tell that's not PB27. Unless they've mixed something with it, like what Sennelier do. And then we have another one which is called Green Earth, Earth Hue, I think. Again, that's not much of a green earth, that's more umberish. Looks interesting. I think it'll be um, a PY129. So it's like gold and green, I think most brands call it. Or green gold, I think. Yeah. So if you search green gold on like um, Jackson's, you'll see some colors. I will swatch it at the end. Well, well, not at the end, but once I finish milling it, and I think it's ready, I'll give it a swatch. Let's see what it looks like. But you can kind of see here when I'm scraping the paint, that's the kind of colour it can come out like a nice like rusty yellow colour. Similar to PY150 but more green and more earthy. But you can use it as a good stuff to substitute for PY150. If like you've got a tube of this hanging around and you don't want to buy any more PY150 or you've run out suddenly, you can use this. And yeah, that's a good substitute for that. 
if you're mixing obviously green things like plants if you're wanting to paint something pure yellow it might not be a good one to reach for because it'll be a little bit too green but you could always mix a cooler yellow in with it to bring back its yellowness like a py3 or something and that'll bring back its more yellow tone um, you did swatch the PB15, the one from Sennelier with a uh, mineral base. Oh no, so it's not from Sennelier, but it said it comes made with a mineral base. Yes, I imagine it's similar to, to that. I did use that one with the mineral base. I think I use it for, I think I said Ice, Ice Queen, which is a Christmas colour I did. And I made it for a limited colour called Baby Blue, I want to call it, saying I called it. It was a long time ago. I think I was still back on same paint on Etsy. On there, so definitely a long time ago i've had my shop for like three years this year i want to say my own website under my own name much paint here but I only need to make six pan, half pans of this colour. I don't need to make um, very much. This will probably make more than six half pans but it will do. A uh, brand called Natural Pigments and I seem to remember it was really for because was, I have far too much of it. Oh no, that reminds me I need to make a note of that thing you said earlier, the pigment face. Hang on, let's write it down, because I will forget. Um, let's try and find a pen. Rublev, you call it, didn't you? Rublev. Is that the pigment manufacturer, I think you said? Let's write it down, because I will forget it. This needs to be done super neatly. Whoa, my paint's making room for it. Yes, my paint's a little bit runny. Oh, let's try that. But this is milling quite well. I don't know if it's had more water to it to help him mull it a bit further, but it's mulling pretty quickly actually this time. Sometimes it takes a long time, sometimes it doesn't. I guess having a really heavy paint muller helps. <laughs> but yeah, it's going to be a very busy week, I think, with everything. <laughs> Hopefully I'm going to make some, finally finish and sort out some videos. I finished doing all my voiceovers this week and uploaded some videos, so I need to schedule them. I need to get on and record some more voiceovers for more videos. I need to start recording videos as well for my big comparison of student grade that I'm doing paints. So yeah, it's going to be another busy week. <laughs> I'll have some time tomorrow morning before I jump into work, so I might try and do a few bits tomorrow morning. I also need to do Patreon, get, get on Patreon this month as well. My Patreon dot cards. Not even get, gotten ready to set them up yet. <laughs> Not even printed it. So the Victoria Green is from Rublev. I will have to have a look.
so far so good. Next colors I need to make are magenta and then I need to make a violet color. So I'm gonna go for dioxazine violet, I think. I also this week need to start wrapping paints ready in preparation. I wanna go back to labeling my pans. Originally I labeled all my pans with the names on for each paint, but it became quite time consuming and quite fiddly to do. So I stopped doing it, but I need to get back to doing it, I think. I think it would be helpful for people to have them labeled. So I might try and clean up and label a few pans this week. Whoops, I'm jiggling the camera. What's everybody working on at the moment, either art-wise or paint-making-wise or anything? <laughs> or you're too busy eating chocolate Easter eggs and enjoying the Easter, Easter sunshine we're getting at the moment. Spring weather started, even though I think next week we're supposed to be getting cold again, as in under 10 degrees. <laughs> Not really that cold compared to some countries. It's not exactly Canada winter. <laughs> right, I might test this and see how it's getting on. Again, my best judgment, I bought Rose Matter Genuine from recent Jackson Art Sale. Are you talking about paint tube or pigment? I know that um, Windsor News is so, so Rose Matter Genuine. Yeah, I bought a few bits in their art sale too. There was a couple of tubes of paint that I was, uh, one tube of paint that I was running low on. So I updated my stock on that. And then there, there was also another colour I got. And I also got some gouache. But I might record the unboxing of it. It's been a while since I did a pigment or a paint or of any kind, so I might do that. Um, you're only doing a few pans of each colour, but you realise how quickly the English labels because it's so looks so similar dried. Yes, they do. Um, it's even worse when you are a paint maker and you've got ten to twenty half pans of each colour. <laughs> me. <laughs> uh, you want to try Rose Magellan for a really long time, but it's so expensive. You haven't even shipped it yet, yet, yet due to COVID delay. What brand is it? Because I know that Daniel Smith's Rose Matter isn't actually genuine Rose Matter. I think the only genuine one I've seen is actually from um, Windsor and Newton. And even then, it's not actually the genuine as genuine as what it was back in the day. I do have a tube of it somewhere. It smells like roses. It smells really nice. Oh, you bought it from Windsor Newton, so it should be. Yeah, it is technically genuine, but it's different to their old genuine one. Apparently, their old genuine one was much nicer and more genuine, from what I've heard. I don't know what that means, but yeah, that's what I've been told. <laughs> It's a nice colour, it's very weak tinting mind. So I would be careful how you're using it. I would use it on its own if like painting pink things, rather than trying to use it as a like a magenta in a mixing triad because it's very weak tinting. So you're gonna have to use quite a lot of the paint up if you want to use it in a like for mixing. Which isn't so great because as you said, it's not very affordable, it's very expensive, so you'd be using a lot of paint to get a mix. 
Oh, high curious color. Um, so we're starting off here with PY129, which is a golden green or green gold, depending on how you want to say it. <laughs> Try that, this out. You can, I have seen the pigment genuine, Rose Matter Genuine from Cornelison's and Crema, but again, it's really, really expensive and I would be put off from buying it because it's so expensive, such a small amount and it's fugitive as well. So yeah, I didn't, I've not bothered with it. It's one of the colors I'd love to get, but I uh, don't know if people would be interested in it. I think in general, and people don't like Colors that aren't per like aren't got okay like fastness, like colors that are fugitive. Fugitive. A lot of people try to avoid. I think if you're buying handmade colors, because I think most people buy handmade paint are pigment nerds. Like they know their stuff. I think they like to avoid. That's going down really nicely. Feels really nice to paint down actually. Some pigments fresh off the board can be a bit gloopy, a bit sticky, but it's actually going down quite nicely. I forgot you guys can't see it. Let's try and pop it this side so you guys can maybe see it a bit better. It's got a nice flow in the water to it. Oh, I did good. <laughs> Go. Let's just see if that's dry. Can you guys see it now? If not, I'll show it on the camera. So that's what it looks like. It's a golden colour, golden olive colour. I don't know what that quite looks like. Oh, actually, it's not looking too far off. Kind of PY150 vibes. If you want to kind of to compare it to, if you've not seen that colour before. Uh, you've been 19 colours in the last couple of weeks. Wow. Yeah, if you're making colours for personally, I would recommend getting like a cheap palette. Have I got my own original cheap palette? Probably. Yeah, here. So this is what I started off with when I first made, started making, oh, it's gone mouldy, um, making handmade colours. So I would pour them into here because they've got nice big wells. It's bigger than half pans. And yeah, so that's the way I would do it. These are really cheap and expensive. You can get bigger ones of these too. Like I think I've got, I mean, this one was sent to me by Otto. But again, I think this is only around five pounds, I wanna say, for a big one like this. Maybe try again, so that, that might be more helpful for you, like if you're gonna keep it for personal use only, you might find it more beneficial to have something like that than all the little half pans, because they're easy to misplace, get lost, fall over, fall on the floor, sit on, you know, they're really easy to lose track of. Sticking. Nineteen colours is a lot. Like I think I make on average ten-ish colours, roughly per sale batch, just because I don't want to overload myself or overload buyers. I think sometimes if you make too much, with people when buying, it can give you the overwhelmed with choices, and as well. Um. I know some things like if you're viewing on a iPad or a phone, you can't see all of the color, all of the colors all together. So you have to like keep clicking next on the page. So it's not beneficial to make too many colors. I want to say I make around 10 to 15 colors. On average, sometimes it's like 11 or 12, usually. But 10 is the average. Or sometimes I make like 10, like I'm doing this time around, I'll make 10 different colors to go on sale and then I'll make sets to go on top of that. So it's not too much for people to get bogged down with. Um, so PB19 AK Permanent Rose is a good match to it. Oh. Um, you also want to smell the tube of Rose Matter. It does really smell the roses. I don't know if it's the pigment or they've added something to the paint. I'm probably going to say they've added something to the paint like um, rose oil or rose syrup or something to make it smell that rosy because it does smell really, really nice that paint. Like you can notice it when you use it and on the painting itself it smells of it smells really floral. Mm 
Yeah, that's what I mean. When you see colours like this, you're seeing like the big mass tones. So how it would be in a palette or a pan pan. Obviously, when you paint it out, it looks a bit different. Don't get me wrong, if you keep layering this on top of each other, you will get that green back if you did quite a few layers of that. I painted it quite concentrated, but I'm not doing lots of layers at the moment. <laughs> but yeah, if you did want that olive green, layers. <laughs> That's why I really recommend diluting your paint down and working lots of layers with watercolour because you really do get all the benefits then of the colour. Get that depth from that colour that you want. I had a really good idea that didn't, I didn't follow up on. When I first started, I used this round chapstick pots. And if I didn't, it didn't work out, I could add whatever I needed. Yeah, that's a good idea. You mean store your wet paint in? Or to store the dry paint in? Because I obviously use, obviously I use a bit bigger than um, chapstick pots because I um, make larger batches, but yeah, these are 16 milliliter jars. I store mine in. Or sometimes I will use leftover paint pot, pavement pots. Uh, speaking of old paints, there are a lot of vintage rigid, wind, there are a lot of vintage wind watercolour paint lots from estate sales on eBay. Yeah, I saw that one too with genuine gamboge. I really hate hate them sometimes, they're good, but I also really hate them because they'll have like the one panel, the one sheet that you really want, like the genuine gamboge, like you really want that one, but they'll then put it in with all the colours you don't want. But of course, they want you to pay for those colours anyway, so they want to they charge like a couple of pounds per pan for the colours you don't want, so you end up paying like £30 for all that lot, but you only want the one pan, which is really irritating. Is actually really nice and smooth so perhaps this is mold it's feeling pretty um slick as well like feel pr feeling pretty um done if that makes sense that's like the ones i've got now i'll make a small actually see what the pigment was like and if it gave me a chance to see what they look like which i feel like, ah yeah that's a good idea here's the one word of warning i would give to anybody out there if you want to get into paint making. There'll be loads of videos, there are quite a few videos on YouTube about it, including mine. But you remember that those you see, like for myself or Ev or any other paint makers, we make large quantities of paint because we sell them. So we'll make paint to make, you know, 10 to 20 half pans on the average, which is a lot of paint. If you're a hobbyist and you're doing it just for personal use, you don't need that much paint. So do keep that in mind, you'll be working in much, much smaller batches. Don't be adding like a tablespoon or two of pigment to your board because you'll be getting a lot of paint from that. Unless you do paint very large and use a lot of paint, but generally I don't think most people do. And most colors like this one, for example, lasts a long time. Like a full pan of this color would last me years. I don't actually use this colour on my palette. I think I've got P150 or a Quinn Gold Hue on my palette usually, or sometimes Quinn Gold Genuine if I've got a tube of my genuine stuff lying around. Okay, I'm gonna address that comment because it's, I've seen the videos and they annoy me. Super Ray Dizzle is the king of buying old paint on YouTube. No, she's not. You need to really rewatch them. She does not do a good job. Um, I know for a while she irritates a lot of pigment nerds um, with a lot of what she buys. She doesn't buy old paint, she buys... Are you talking about the ones where that guy has made like oil paint, vintage oil paint, like manganese blue, um, mummy brown, um, cinnabar? Are you talking about that, those videos? Because if you are, she's really misinformed and she's giving out a lot of false information. And I really hate those videos because they're so wrong.
Yeah, I would agree. This is like the zen bit. This is the enjoyable bit. The mulling and the mixing. The filling the pans and drying them is the pain in the butt bit. And wrapping them too. <laughs> so if you're doing them as a hobby for personal use, you probably get a better deal than um, the paint maker making them to sell. <laughs> Oh, the vintage paint sets from Super. I've not seen them, I don't think, or have they been a, from a really long time ago? I think I've actually unsubscribed to her and unfollowed her on all of her channels. Those videos about the vintage paints, like the recreating paints, like the Cinnabar and the Mummy Brown, really irritated me personally as a paint maker and as a pigment nerd. I thought, no, I can't be, I cannot support this anymore, and I unfollowed. <laughs> And then as well, she started on Twitter retweeting things from James Charles. And it's just like, nope, that's toxic. I need that off my feed as well. So bye bye. Like you notice it more when you do become a creator, whether it's on Instagram or YouTube, you'll notice there's a big difference in the big channels and big artists compared to the little ones. And the big artists will sometimes try and get away with things that a smaller channel or artist couldn't. And it's not really fair. They'll give out a lot of misinformation, but get away with it because, you know, that's what they're like. Hmm. Uh, your mother-in-law has a paint box filled with watercolors that was her grandfather's and you're desperate to get your hands on it even to swatch them oh yeah that, oh my god that would be amazing that would make such a good video because i think you've got a channel haven't you that would be a really interesting video to watch i definitely would want to watch that <laughs> uh yeah so recreating so the recreating was isn't the dream is you? yeah I also as well don't know if the guy who is making those tubes of oil paint for her in those videos is money it like this or if he's buying like the tubes from Winsor and Newton and mixing them together is what I'm going to probably be leaning towards judging by the look of it. But as well the hues aren't matched very well. Um, so I make and have genuine manganese blue pigment. It's a paint that I make quite a lot. And I can tell you now that the hue that he made is nowhere near close to the genuine manganese blue. Trust me. And even it was the cinnabar that he made. The cinnabar that he made was really red. It wasn't very earthy. Natural cinnabar tends to be a bit more earthy. I test it. It's always damp. Do we just go with it? Uh, let's... I mean, it looks done. It depends if there's enough binder in it. I want to do the bulk test to be 100% sure. I have also been eyeing up the real Cinnabar or yeah, Cinnabar, I think it's called, or Vermilion Genuine. Same sort of pigment. I've been eyeing that up. I'd love to make it, but it's a really, really toxic pigment. I think I'd have to be really careful when doing it on the large scale. I, I think I'd have, to, I'd have to buy a proper ventilator mask in order to feel comfortable making Cinnabar, I think because it's so toxic and I probably need to wear rubber gloves when making it too because I will not want any of it on my skin. You have some pigment called cinnabar and you're glad that it isn't. Oh, so you don't think it's genuine cinnabar, you think it's slow, hue. Yeah, I've worked with some real toxic pigments. Like manganese blue and cadmium is quite toxic. 
but they're not a patch on anything from like cinnabar or the old G gamboge or rialga pigments which i have also kind of worked with like they are made from arsenic those pigments and they are super toxic like manganese and cadmium are toxic but the arsenic ones are super toxic. <laughs> yeah, like manganese blue and cadmium red, kind of like that. If you got, if I got it on my hands, I wouldn't be worried. Like I'd wash it off and not worry about it because it's not gonna like really do you any damage. But ones like Rialga and Cinnabar and Vermilion, they would be the ones that could do damage if they got into like an open wound or a scratch. I mean, there was one time I accidentally ate a little bit of manganese blue by accident, but I was fine. Um, things like that are fine, but I would panic if I did that with like Rialga or Vermilion because they are very toxic to humans. You know, it's got to be very toxic when um, people make poison out of it <laughs> to kill humans. I think that was just generic tea in there, plain English tea. Come on. I think are you dry? A little bit sticky. Let's try and let's rub you a little bit. That's pretty good. I'm getting a tiny bit of colour transfer. I think that's why it's still damp. But in general, it's not much. I'm going to go with it. Yeah, I'd be nervous to work again with um, those really toxic pigments. I am tempted. It's the same with colours like what's put me off the colours like um, Rose Matter Genuine and colours like that. The reason I don't get them is because um, they're an investment, like you have to know that people want them and they will buy. Um, Pigments like that, I would not, not be sure people would buy or not because I think people would again worry about the toxicity of them, which is why I'd be a bit more nervous to um, make them. I need to find my lids the here, I think. Yes, excuse you. <laughs> uh, the resource pigment in your palette is cobalt turquoise. Definitely not allergic to probably. Hubs also fit me lead orange. And I made it one, but it's not worth it. Um, I don't think that one's, I think that one is toxic, but I don't think it's as toxic as um, the ones that we were talking about, like cinnabar. I've made lead orange. It's gonna be on sale in my next sale batch. And it's a pain in the butt pigment to work with. It, it may have been because of the binder that I made at the time with it, but. I had to completely grind the pig paint down and remake it because it was just horrendous. Um, which means I'm not going to be buying any more gum arabic from Cornelison's. It made very chunky paint and it had a really weird reaction in the jars that the paint did. When, when I made the paint with the gum arabic from Cornelison's, it was like it was really strong or something and it just, it went like jelly. It was really strange. The gum arabic that I've gotten from Crema seems to be doing quite well. And the gum arabic powder that I get from Amazon, it also seems to do quite well when I make paint with it. Like I've had no issues with, it, issues with it, so I'll stick to those, I think. I've also got some Aquazole, which I'm gonna play around with. I got a reply from Crema this week. I asked them how to like, use it. They said they've never used it for watercolors, but they recommend like a 30% Aquazole to 70% water mix, so that's what I've done. So I'm going to make paint with that at some point and see how that goes. I'm going to do some experiments. I'm going to try and do some with just Aquazole. I'm going to make some with Aquazole and my usual additives, so like my humectant and my clove oil and stuff added to it. I'm then going to make some with Aquazole, half Aquazole and half Gum Arabic paint binder. 
and see how it all turns out, I think. <laughs> I think I'm going to offer it as a Patreon dot card, I think. I don't know if it'll be ready in time for April. So it might be May's Patreon dot card, I think, for that one. Um, well, I've got quite a few bits on chat. I need to catch up on oranges, my favorite color. So I'm glad he picked one, but I feel there are way better solutions. Yeah, I've got some really nice oranges that are much better than nice than that one, like um, Pyro or Orange that I sell. I think it's PO36, I'm gonna say, off the top of my head. I can't remember. I've got the card somewhere. Hold on, let's see if I can find it and I can tell you. <laughs> um, the card is here. Yeah, PO36, it looks like that. That's a really nice orange I like. If I could find the PO107, the transparent orange from Winter and Newton, I would buy that one. Because <laughs> that's a really, really nice orange. Um, other comments? Um, would you have made YLN Blue? Um, I've seen it from Cranmer, but it's incredibly expensive. It's about, did I look it up? I think it's about 80 or 90 British pounds for like 50 grams. It would be my most expensive pigment I've ever purchased, which is what's put me off. I'm also now put off because the UK is not in the EU. Um, so we, I think it's anything up to 150 pounds we buy, we can buy without any, facing any import taxes or duty, cost duty fees. So again, it would depend. I know Crema were being really funny about shipping it to the UK and charging people like UK people extra, I think. But they may have resolved it now. I'm not 100% sure. I'd have to ask around from anybody that has purchased from Crema recently. Because whatever I pay out to buy pigment for, I need to make that money back. At least make it back when I sell it. Ideally, I need to make a profit on it, but the very minimum I need to make that money back. So it's all things I have to think about when buying a new pigment. When you're doing things as a hobby, you don't have to think about those things so much because it's a hobby that like you just think about yourself. But I don't do things on a small scale of like one pan. I do 10 pans that's worth of paint. So and that's what I buy in. So if I make a mistake, if I mess up a batch or buy a dodgy pigment or, you know, this pigment doesn't sell, that's money that I've got to take off. And because I make in large scales, I buy large amounts of pigments. It's not cheap. So it's one of those things I'm unsure about. I know Katie Hanna from Canatani Hughes bought it and I have it. I do have a pan of it somewhere. I think it's in my dryer. Um, but yeah, it's it's also a pigment that I'm not fussed on. Like it's it's a nice blue, but I'm not understanding the hype on it. It's just a nice blue. Like it's not anything magical, I don't think. It, I think you can mix a good hue with ultramarine blue and in damp room blue and phthalo blue, I think. Um, it's really to wrap high toxic, the only one that came off with a huge F off sticker. <laughs> yeah. Um, but there are similar, so much more toxic. Yeah. Oh, I like there was a, a white that had the same sticker but had no interest making white at the time. Yeah, I've got white pigment too, but I don't use it very much. I tend to use it in convenience mixes, like my Ice Queen, for example, because I think it suits quite well and the candy cane paint that I did. Obviously, because it was um, red and white striped. Have you seen the Schwinker liquid chocolate line? The grape interests you because it looks like a single pigment indigo or paste grape. I've not had a look at it properly. I've seen it, but I've not really looked into it because I think like most people, they just see the black and are kind of um, put off a little bit by it. That's why I didn't really look into it. I think Otto Kana has a video on it, so I might go watch it if I got time. Um, YNM Blue is just a version of a shrine. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's what puts me off. It's an expensive pigment, and it's got it's nothing. I don't think it's anything overly special, but I'll consider it. I guess I could give it a go. <laughs> right, I'm going to clear clean up, and we'll move on to the next pigment. I think. Let me find the next pigment. <laughs> I think we're going to go with... There's not very much of it left. It should be enough to make some pans. I'm hoping. 
do I switch it out and go for a different version? The colour I might do. Because there's not very much cream up and over magenta left. Have I got any PB19 left? Oh, that's very heavy. Not much left in that either. Hold on, do I have any more? Oh, what's this one? Haha. <laughs> yes, I got plenty. They are the same pigment. So yeah, we're going to change it up. Instead of Quinoa Green and Magenta, we're going to use PB19. I would love to make some of the money back at some point, but it seems to be moving forward to more affordable to get some more jars to try it out and not a huge quantity. Yeah, I would agree. Um, if you are going to start trying to sell paint, I would recommend starting off on something like Etsy or... What's the other one that Big Cartel, I think, that Ame uses or has used? I'd recommend starting off that. Start off three small batches, like five pa half pans of each. And yeah, just really trial it and see how it goes. Because it will be, I would start small so you're not going to miss out loads. You're not going to be like really badly affected if it doesn't sell. And yeah, start off on something that's... Start off small so you don't have to worry about selling too much. And try and stick to colours you think would sell really well. Um, but then again, it's really surprising what colours do sell well and what ones don't. So yeah, I would try and do that. I would also try and really... First of all, put yourself out there on Instagram, start sharing um, paint making like pictures and stuff, start putting it, and put, when you put them, put in the captions below, say that it's coming soon on sale, um, start really promoting it, um, start talking about it in the, on the, like the Discord servers and things, let people know that you're making paint, you're going to be selling it, and yeah, it'll get more people interested. Maybe as well, if you want to really seriously start selling paint, this is what I did. I sent out some samples to like YouTubers for them to review. So like I sent some to Ev, I sent some to like Cat, I sent some to some smaller channels, I sent some to Otto, I sent, you know, that little name drop can be helpful and get you a couple of customers. So it's worth doing. So you have a really interesting couple of turquoise. Ooh. Right, I'm gonna go wash up and then start on the next paint. So I'll just stick this image on the screen just while we're gonna wash up. I won't be hopefully too long. some spray. This colour is so messy. Do I have any other colours? Why am I? It might be... I don't think I do. So I'm looking at my giant box. Any pinks? Not only No pink pinks. Let's just go with the PV19 that I've got.
Ooh. It's making a big mess. Huge mess. Gross. Mm, let's wipe it up. And then I can go grab my board. Well, there's a bit of colour there. Oh. I just realised there's a, some colour on the front. So that kind of made a big mess. <laughs> and the next one's gonna make a big mess too. Let's take, oh, need to be a bit more. Anyway, let's see where's the chat gone. Oh, let me take the image off the screen. Where's the stream gone? There we go. Of oh, cobalt blue. Yeah, it doesn't go too far. I think I've still got some of mine. Okay, actually I use quite a lot. <laughs> it's a really popular colour. I'm thinking about doing a convenience colour, mixing this with like a number or burnt sienna because it's apparently that makes a really nice interesting colour. I need to do more convenience mixes really because I'm running out of colours and pigments. I really want to find a PV19 pigment that's like um, Daniel Smith's quinacridone. No, yeah, quinacridone rose, but the only thing only one that I can find a PV19 are the dark purpley ones, like this one. Yeah, some pigments do. Oh, wait, so three teaspoons filled six pounds, four half pounds of it to spare. Wow. Where did you get your P your cobalt turquoise from? Mine doesn't quite stretch that far. Back in the day, every one of us would need to learn how to make paint. Yeah, true. Yeah, that's what um, the artists did back in the day, like Van, I think people like Van Gogh sometimes made their own pigment paints. So they buy pigments from manufacturers and mud it with a muller. Alright, let's go with this paint. So they're two different bottles, but they are the same thing because they have the same catalogue number on them and the exact same pigment number. So I think they just renamed this. The one was called Synquasia Violet on T201. And then there's another one that's been renamed as Chinacridone Violet PB19. But they do, they are the same because the catalog numbers are the same. You've got some PB19 that's insanely bright, like Opera Rose. Maybe you've got one that's um Got like a fit of some brightener or filler in it, depending on where you got it from. So I've got one more colour to make after this. I'm not going to do it on stream, but the other colour I've got to make is um, a dioxine violet, which I mentioned. But 
But I don't know, is that going to be too much purple? What do you think? Because this is quite a purple colour. So do you think Dioxine Violet is a good one? To go for along with this violet, because it's this one's quite quite purpley in there. Just worried about it being too much purple. <laughs> that should be enough, I think. Would we make a little bit more? Might make a bit more. I'm gonna put another half of uh, a spoon in. Because any extra can be it's a bit chunky. Any extra can be sold. So always quite nice as well. Wow. PB19, PR101, PBR, so yeah. They can be very confusing to have many different payment versions. Yeah, that is true. That's just the way that some payments are. Some payments have a lot of versions. Same with PG23 as well. There's a lot of different green earths out there. Thankfully though, earth colours like green earth and all the other ones you mentioned, like the PR101 and PBR7, thankfully, they're all really cheap. <laughs> I've got quite a few different versions of all of those. I love handmade green earths as well. People like green earths from handmade paint companies. They're so good. Whoops. <laughs> Paint making is a messy, messy hobby. But yeah, going back to that box paint, if you need any advice or tips or if you want anything like that, like advice, um, you're more than mess welcome to ask either through a live chat or if you want to DM me or anything, you're more than welcome to ask and I will try my best to help if you have any advice. I'm not going to turn around and say I'm an expert, but I've had some experience. I, you know, I've played around with Etsy before. I've sold on my own site, and you know, I have a little bit of experience. But I would, if you're serious about selling paint, I would d diverse your knowledge. Make paint first, see if it's something for you, which I guess you've already done that. But you've ticked that box, and then I would look at some videos. I would try some handmade paints, so buy some different paints from different makers if you haven't done so already just so you can see what they do what they offer what kind of level of packaging they do might give you some ideas as well and then to go extra further you can always ask other paint makers most of us are quite approachable there is a paint makers discord that's been set up i think by stacy from Starwaki colors i think she set it up um so if you want to invite to that let me know and i could invite you but yeah, that's what I would probably I would do. And then when it comes to actually setting, you know, self-promote a lot, send some samples out, and yeah, get people talking about your paint. That advice goes to anybody but wants to get into paint making. But it can be a very difficult thing to get into to actually start selling. I've seen quite a lot of small sellers pop up on Instagram and they don't sell very much paint or they really struggle to get it off going. Even back when I was first started selling paint, there weren't as many makers around. Like there were the big main ones, like obviously blue, that blue, green leaf blue, whatever it is. One, the really expensive one, there was obviously ones like Redwood, Willow, there was Ev did them. There was Fifers, I believe, there was Stone Ground. You know, there was some like that. There was obviously Star Wars Colours, there were, you know, ones like that, but since then it's like doubled since at least doubled in the amount of handmade makers out there so the market's even more difficult to get into now and obviously i got a bit lucky i copped out a little bit because obviously i managed to get my hands on manganese blue and i'm like the only reliable producer now of watercolor paint manganese blue so quite a bit of a quirk to draw people in <laughs> So it can be difficult to find your niche sometimes. Same with illustration, really. Finding your niche is 
the challenging bit. And I've missed a load of chat. <laughs> Quim red, it, it, it dries like this, transparent red. It's a hot pink money. Oh, I've got the Quim red from Cornelison's. It's really red. It's also a bit of a pain in the butt color for it drying, I've noticed. This needs more paint binder. It's really thick. Whoops. I'm struggling to mix him. <laughs> You've got some green earth from Rublev that's lovely. Yeah, I think it's important to help each other out, like in general with anything. Because I know it's tough getting into a market of anything, whether that's art or paint making or crafts or whatever it is, I know it's difficult. I mean, I helped out another small business with called um, Sketch and Story. There are art subscription books in the UK. I was learned their first, I was their first paint maker featured. And I sold my paints to them pretty cheaply so they could do it. Because obviously it was that first one and I wanted to help them out. So I undersold to help them out. Because it was something that I really believed in. And I, the creator behind it sounded really good and she had good ideas and I supported her idea. Oh, hi Joy, how are things going? Oh yeah, definitely. I, I definitely doesn't really pay my bills. <laughs> it's to the point where I make enough now where I have to pay taxes on it. I don't make a ton of money. Well, I do make a ton of money on it, but it costs a lot of money to run, as I'm sure you're aware. Like I may probably make a couple of thousand pounds a year selling paint, but then it costs a couple of thousand pounds to run, so I don't make a lot of profit on it. You know, when you've got payment orders uh, a couple of hundred pounds, you know, it can get very expensive and then the shipping on top. There's extras, there's wrapping, there's packaging supplies. It's all expensive. <laughs> for my first time from my hubs, I said wrap it up and sell it. <laughs> That's good. Um, so no, I don't sell manganese blue in a tube. Um, anybody that wants to make manganese blue in a tube is a fool. And I'll tell you why. Um, granulating pigments in particular, and manganese blue in particular, granulates so heavily that it splits the paint binder. So, I got part of it on the go. I might have, um, they normally do. Maybe I don't. That's all wrong. That's really peculiar. I normally have a pan of it on the go, a jar of it, you know, on the go. It's a different jar. That's red. That's also red. Hmm, perhaps I don't have a jar of it on the go, but I'll show you. So this is. A similar sort of thing. This is my jar of malachite and you can see that it separates from the binder. Um, really granulated pigments do that quite a lot. Um, and selling it in a tube would, is not something I'm planning on doing because I don't want loads of horrible like messages coming into me saying oh I bought your paint and it's split in the tube. I want a refund because it's a very expensive paint to make. And it would also be very expensive in the tube to make. Like I would have to sell it for like 20 pounds for a tube, like a small tube, because it's a very expensive to make that amount of paint. So people will be paying a lot of money for it. And if it splits, people then might come complaining about it. And I don't really want to deal with that. So no, I won't be making it in tubes. Manganese blue might draw people in, but the quality and how lovely your paints are to use keeps me by. Oh, thank you, Nettie. I'm glad you enjoy them. And yeah, that's what I mean. Like, you can have really nice paints, 
but sometimes you need something to draw people in, especially if you're just starting out. You need like a draw, like a hook. And then once people find out how, if people enjoy your paints, of the manganese blue, of, uh, like other than the drawing, then that's good, and that's how you get a more sustained customer base, I guess. Yeah, that's a very good idea. <laughs> Give your partner the uh, task of wrapping it, because they're not um, they're not fun to wrap. They're quite fiddly. It's a job that I really dislike doing. <laughs> Ooh, that might be a little bit too runny. You have some transparent oxide yellow that basically just poured the binder out. All well, the pigments stayed inside. Yeah, some pigments can really separate and don't really do very well in liquid form. Manganese blue is definitely one of those, as is um, ones like lapis lazuli and malachite. They don't really do very well in liquid form. And I wouldn't want to sell them in paint form, in tube form, because of all the potential issues I might get with them. I don't want lots of unhappy customers coming to me saying, oh, your paint's split, I want my money back. I don't really want to be doing that. So it's best just to sit in pans. Um, best if you really try and prepare. <laughs> oh, that's good. It's, quite, it's good that he's um, on board with what you want to do, and he's supportive. Um, I didn't realise how often I was using your desk, and you, it, it just fit in my dots perfectly. <laughs> I'm glad you like it. Um, whenever people say that they're liking my dusk colour, it always makes me laugh, because um, that dusk colour was a complete and total accident. It was a colour that was never meant to exist, and was an accident from a failed colour that I was making. <laughs> I've not made it for a while, actually. It's one of those colours that sounds pretty well, I think, even though it's a convenience mixed colour. <laughs> yeah, it always makes me smile and chuckle when people say they like it. It's like, you like a mistake. <laughs> that's another thing that's what I mean when things, well, anything really that you sell, you'll be surprised what people like. Like, something that could be a total mistake and an accident can go down really well. <laughs> um, Bind separation always happens to grind eating paint, cobalt turquoise, yeah. So they do it too, like in commercial brands. Um, but it really happens quite strongly in handmade band brands because we can't mold the paint as finely. So it, bind separation happens a bit more. So like when I before like with the malachite and the manganese blue before I pour it into a pan. I really stir it, and then I pour it in really thin layers and put it in the um, dehydrated to dry quickly so that it's not going to split in the pan. That's something that I really struggled with when I first started making it. It split in the pan as it was, as it was drying because it was taking too long to dry because I was putting too much honey in it. It's things like that that you just kind of have to work through and it takes a bit of time to work out how to do it correctly. Yeah, it's a new Muller. It's from Thomas Petty Glass. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to hold it without getting paint everywhere. There we go. <laughs> I ordered it a little while ago, and yeah, I love it. I've got a video coming out about it. I don't know when, but yeah, I'm working on a video for it, talking about it properly. So I've not shared any pictures or images of it online yet because uh, I'm saving it for the video. <laughs> But yeah, he's the glass maker that's been causing a stir amongst paint makers. And lots of people have been eyeing up his paint barons and mothers because of him. He's found himself a nice little niche amongst us artists, which is good. <laughs> uh, as Bob Russ used to say, yeah, it's a happy accident. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I have some nice dark greens and maroons and blues. That's a more nice purple tone. I use a lot of blue and purple. I think I've still got the dusk recipe somewhere. I hope I have. <laughs> yeah, so it also depends where like some people get some really strange pigments depending on where they are um, in the world. I know Cornelison's does some really nice ones. So if you're based in the UK, 
we've got a bit good pigment manufacturer on our doorstep, which is good. And they're always guaranteed to work pretty much Cornet Essence. I've never had a bad pigment from them. They're gum Arabic chunks I'm not a fan of, but pigment wise, I've never had a bad pigment. So they're definitely worth, they're really good. You can buy from them with confidence. Whereas I have some dodgy pigments coming from Crema that aren't usable. It'll do a very dark moon glow. Yeah, it was, the color I was actually trying to make was actually soda light. So this is one of the dud ones I got from Crema. I got some soda light pigment. Let's see if I can find the jar of it. There's probably a jar of it somewhere. Um, Oh, yeah, no. I see where you're in Where is it? I've got blue. Oh, this one. There we go. So it looks like this. So it's so light. Um, but it's very weak tinting. There's no colour that comes off of it. And it's very gritty. So I thought when I was making it, oh, let's add a little bit of this blue to it to see if that makes it a bit more like the Daniel Smith version. Then I thought, well, that's a bit too blue. Let's add some red to it to make it a bit more like um, dark purple. And I kept going and kept going and I got this dark, this colour. I thought, you know what, I'm not going to get match the colour so light. Let's just stop here. Let's see how this paint mix I've got sells. And yeah, the rest was history. It sold out pretty quickly <laughs> once I put it in the shop. And it became a bit of a fan favourite along with my ultramarine blue and manganese blue. So, yeah, a total happy accident. I'm glad you like the mullet. Yeah, it's really pretty. I do like it. <laughs> I won't go into full nitty gritty in the video, but long and short, I do like it. I don't really have any complaints with it. Apart from obviously it's a bit pricey, but it's worth every penny because it's really well made and it feels really nice. It's very heavy. And Thomas was really good and very approachable and he was just really nice. He like was good. Like it was, this was actually a paint baron. So the bottom of it wasn't frosted. Um, he frosted it for me and I paid for it for uh, the price of a paint miller. So that was nice of him. The new creep show is about um, Bob Ross go fighting off a demon horde at a public broadcast station. It was beautifully cheesy. <laughs> oh, wait, there's such a thing as a bad pigment. Yes, there are bad pigments. Some pigments don't play very well. Or The problem as well with crema is, and with pigment manufacturers, is they're not specifically thinking of one watercolour paint makers or paint makers in general. It could be for anything like Crema will provide custom to factories, small for small factories or manufacturers or anything like that. That's why they offer things like coloured glass and other various, very, many various different qualities and sort of different types of um, coarseness of pigments. They're not all intended to be made into paint and they're not all intended for paint makers. So sometimes they will just put like a the basic, oh yeah, it's good for this, good for this, good for this, without really checking it, which is why it happened. And then when I emailed them about it, they said, oh yeah, no, you shouldn't be making watercolor paint out of this pigment. So why you put on the listing that it's suitable for watercolor paint, which is really frustrating. Um, cursor, Caramo cursor, customer service, when I had it in the past, was really bad. Recently, when I've dealt with their customer service, it's been really good. So I wonder if maybe they've had some training and some reforming going on with their customer service because it's really stepped up quite well. Like even with, when the person emailed me back about the Aquizzle, they're really nice about it. And as helpful as they can. Could have been. So, yeah. If you have any doubts about pigment, if you're looking at buying pigments, Email the person, email the company first. They might be able to tell you a bit more about it. Uh, it does get a bit sparkly. Um, I don't think it is. I think the the very first ever batch might have had a tiny bit of something to it, not a sparkle, but had a bit of grittiness and texture to it. 
because of the sodalite that I mixed in with it, but I know that I just, I just submitted the sodalite and I didn't really notice a difference. So no, it's not sparkly. Even the first batches weren't sparkly. Whoops. But yeah, I've never had really a bad one from Cornell Essence, apart from actually their, um, no, I don't think it was a bad pigment. I think it was just the fact that their gum arabic that made it a bit problematic. The, um, that orange that I was talking about. I may buy it again. I see, I feel. I need to get a proper mask and I can buy some toxic pigments. <laughs> But yeah, I've recorded the video on the paint mother already. I just need to voice over it. But I've got quite a lot of videos that I'm in the middle of doing that I need to finish. Some have been uploaded. I think I've uploaded. I think I've got three or four videos uploaded, ready to go live. So about a month worth of videos. I like to work in big batches. So I'll like batch make videos and then batch release them. So sometimes if I get a busy month, Sometimes I'll get a couple of weeks where I don't have a video because I'm in a bit of like batch doing them. I tend to get um, little energy spurts with it. Like I'll get some energy. Uh, I'll like be really into making videos like one month and then next month I won't have the motivation to do it. So yeah, or I'll be busy doing other things. Like obviously last month I had a paint sale go on, paint go on sale. So that was my main focus. So yeah, it varies. So obviously I do quite a lot, I work full time and then I do paint making, I do YouTube and I do art on top of it. So I'm very, very busy. <laughs> uh, I love handmade paints. The one thing I ever get is I don't have any of your paints. Oh, no joy. Perhaps I need to send you out a little care package and have some paint samples for you to try. Oh, speaking of, how are you? How far are you in the sketchbook exchange sort of leapfrogging? <laughs> I have sent some dot cards out with my sketchbook, with the sketchbook exchange, so you will end up um, with some paint sample. <laughs> I don't know what. <laughs> Depends what everybody else is going to use, but I stuck loads of paint samples in the back of the book along with some postcards. So it depends what person before you has taken, before you've taken or not taken. It's strange when you go from a natural pigment that feels kind of like breaking up so and soft and next is crunchy and feels synthetic. Yeah, I definitely get this with this one. This feels different to like how a natural pigment is. I tend to find natural ones like um, green earths and yellow ochres. I tend to find them quite creamy, buttery in consistency, whereas these feel more syrupy, I think is the way I would describe it. But ultramarine blue is the same, it feels quite syrupy. Oh, uh, you didn't join in a special exchange in the second. But yeah, I'll have to try and definitely send something up to, you're in New Zealand, aren't you? I'll see if I can put something together. It might take me a while. <laughs> I will try and send something out, I think. I know the sketchbook exchange is quite a commitment. I did really well and smashed the last sketchbook. I literally did it in a week or two and sent it off really early. I don't know where things are going with the sketchbook exchange and sending things off. Um, I think it's... I think Alex is managing it. So I think she knows where everything is with it because it's 
can be confusing because there's a lot of people. I think there's 14 or 15 people. Yeah, it's definitely a big commitment and it's obviously for two years-ish. I know some of us are, I don't know how long it's gonna take, if I'm honest. I would probably, I think the original estimate was two and a half years, I think, when someone worked it out. But I think it will be close to two years, if not a year and a half, maybe. Because a lot of us, some people are bulking sketchbooks, so they're taking their time with it. But by the time, that, like when they're getting stuck, like they're being, they're taking their time with completing a sketchbook. So they're getting multiple sketchbooks come in at once. So they're finishing those at once, then sending a load out at once. So it might be quicker. That as well, like obviously people sending in house to each other, like those sending between each other in the US will be quicker than say somebody sending internationally, like the last person in the US chain sending to Europe. Is it gonna take longer to get to them from say US to Europe than it is say from say like New York US to say like Texas US or whatever. Same in the UK, like I'm sending to Gabor in the UK. It, it takes like five days maximum for it to get to him. Whereas like internationally, it might take like up to two weeks. So that will speed things up a bit as well. Cause we've allowed like a month for shipping, I think. If memory serves me correctly. Yeah, Alex is doing a great job. I don't know how she, how she does it. <laughs> keeping on top of all those people. I think as well as artists, I think we're quite, um, what's the word? I don't think we're too great with deadlines as artists, I don't think, just in general speaking terms. because so we all kind of panic, I think, and procrastinate and worry and stress. <laughs> so I think it's definitely gonna be a challenge, <laughs> keeping everything on track. Like I know a couple of people are being late with it. Like I know Lee is being a bit late, but then, like I said, she's bulking sketchbooks. So instead of sending one at a time, she'll be sending a couple. But yeah, I think it will take probably a good year and a half to two years before it all completes. I don't know if we should test this color yet or not. It seems to be quite smooth. Should we test it? Let's test it. <laughs> I wonder what it's gonna turn out like. Let's shimmy this over a little bit. And hopefully you guys can see. A bit better then. Paint brush. But this is quite a plum color. Stay. So it's quite dark, which is why I wonder whether or not I should include Dioxine Violet in this set or try and find another colour to put in the set. Because this colour is replacing um, Quinacridone Magenta because I don't have enough of the paint. But yeah, it's pretty plummy. So also a little bit aquaphobic, I find. Perhaps it needs more paint binder in it. I don't think this desk is completely flat, if I'm honest. I think there's a little bit of a tilt to it. I don't really notice it, but sometimes like this, it will roll. I have a easel, a Artosphere easel. I need to start working on that with painting really, but it's difficult to keep up with it. Cause I often like to work quite wet. So the mixture might run down the page. The paint might run down the page, which is always something I worry about. <laughs> my mother's not trained to voice comments. No, neither are my cats either. <laughs> They're getting there, but I still think they're um, not listening to me. 
I have a clicker that's a roast, so I need to um, try and do some clicker training. <laughs> if it will work. Yes, paint's very syrupy in feel. Whereas something like um like yellow ochre or even the cobalt colour, the cobalt um turquoise PB for 28. And that feels usually quite creamy, but this feels very syrupy, this one. Magentas and phthalos tend to feel more syrupy. Your husband wants a haircut for his birthday. Oh, at least he still has hair. <laughs> I am in need of a hair trimmer. And mine's definitely quite wild. I don't think my camera works. Is this gonna work? Oh, I don't even have it set up, which is good. <laughs> I'm not gonna try it. <laughs> I think our lockdown ends soon. I think non-essential shops and hairdressers can open. Is it something like? A week and a half, I want to say. I think it's a week Monday. It's the 14th, or is it the 12th? I can't remember. My chair's really squeaking. The only thing you manage to train box in is not to chew electrical cords, it's just support for everything else. <laughs> yeah, mine are pretty spoiled. <laughs> Can't deny it. And they're very, Loki is very misbehaved. He's into everything. He's very naughty. I'd have thought that getting him done would calm him down a bit and make him behave more, but nope. So you made an interesting grey called Lane's Grey. And it's really nice. Oh, sounds nice. I'll have to share some pictures on Discord of it. And that colour seems to be drying okay. I'm still worried a bit, it's a bit too violet -y. I don't know if making deoxine violet on top of this would be too much. Oh, it's on Friday. Is it this Friday coming next next Friday? Yeah, I'm slightly worried about it being not just sort of hair places, but shop places in general. To be fair, this weekend wasn't too bad. We went out to, I guess, a local park, like a giant park we've got here. It's got a big man-made lake in it. It's huge. It literally stretches for miles. Um, and we went for a big walk around it. It took us about an hour and a half to like have lunch and do this walk. Um, I was worried that was gonna be really busy because it's like the first weekend since we've had a um, 
easing restrictions, we're allowed to meet people outside now and social distance outside, so I was worried there'd be lots of people there. It was busy-ish, but it wasn't horrendously busy like I was expecting. But yeah, I think the next one is going to be the one we're holding our breath on because when non-essential shops can open. And I think it's going to be a real test to see how well people are going to buy by restrictions and see how well our vaccines are working. You think Moxie is snoring? <laughs> That's really sweet. I never caught, I'm not caught mine snoring yet. <laughs> I did fall asleep. Was it Friday? Or was it Friday? It might have been Friday. I fell asleep for low key on Friday. We went for a small walk just around the local area here. Um, Loki was being very clingy on Friday, which isn't like him. And I sat with him and I cuddled him, and we both dozed off and fell asleep. We were only asleep for, I was only asleep for about 20 minutes, but I dozed off cuddling him. He didn't seem to mind, so <laughs> he seemed to enjoy it because he was asleep as well. <laughs> No one warned me that cats make dream noises. <laughs> they can do, some of them do. It's always a twitch as well, that's quite funny. I'll just sit there and you'll see like a twitch going. <laughs> Dreaming of a giant bowl of, well, a giant bowl of cream. <laughs> Loki's getting big, he's really heavy. He's not even fully grown yet, he's only six months, and he's huge. All right, let's see, is this color dry? No. I think this might need more paint binder. I don't want to add too much though. It's always the worry. Hopefully when my Crema order arrives, not Crema, my Jackson order arrives this week, I can finally put some of these paints into pans. Which should be good. The whisker twitches. Yeah, that's what I always get. Whisker twitches. Uh, ME is pretty quiet, but Bear makes all sorts of peeps and squeaks. I know it's funny that some cats are more vocal than others. My parents got a rescue called Ernie, and he's quite quiet. He doesn't really meow very much, but their other cat that they've had for, well, since she was a kitten, um, Maisie, she's really vocal. Mine is starting to get a little bit vocal and trying to put a stop to it because I don't want vocal cats. <laughs> it's too much. Or they'll complain at the slightest of things. It tends to be around feeding time, like if they see me opening like their meat packets, pouches, that stop meowing, even though that they can see that I'm opening it. It's almost like they think that I'm going to eat it for myself and not give it to them. <laughs> Loki will also whinge just randomly if he's in the living room, if no one's giving him attention and there's nothing for him to destroy, he will start whinging. Lyra, Lyra will whinge and cry at me randomly me to come over to like if I'm stood at the doorway or in the kitchen she will sometimes whinge and meow because she wants me to come over and see her <laughs> that's gone really purple in my camera why is it so purple that's really strange it shouldn't be that color let's lighten it up a bit maybe it's a contrast she needs it to be more pink oh there we go let's try that it should be more of that color the white balance is it too white balanced let's try that that is really purple that looks like the oxygen violet almost it's not that purple i promise <laughs> yeah like, i don't mind a bit of chat but my parents have cats but they're very talkative before i just Wait, sometimes it's nice, but sometimes it's just like, stop whinging. <laughs> but 
I don't mind them whinging, like, I don't mind them talking, but it's when they're whinging about food. And I'm literally stood there opening up their meat. Like, I'm gonna give it to you guys, I'm not gonna eat it myself, am I? <laughs> like, it's weird that they don't understand that yet. Oh no, just got that on my table. Let's try rubbing a bit of that. I guess I should still go violet, the obscene violet. There's still quite a bit of colour coming off of that. A bit too much, I think, for my liking. I might add a tiny bit more paint binder to it. Not much. I want to try and finish up by quarter past, twenty past six, if possible. So yeah, that's our small paint binder. We'll go for five more minutes, and then I'll jar it up, and we'll call it a day. And I'll stream again next week, same sort of time, two p.m. England time, which is. 3 p.m. like Germany time and 9 a.m. I think now, um, US time, well, New York time even, New York time, that's the one. Hopefully next week we'll do some painting, if I can design something to paint. understand food is so many real <laughs> yeah what I tend to do now is I'll shut them in one room and then do their food and then let them out <laughs> that way they're a bit more quieter they've been shut in the in one room quite a lot now because they've managed to climb up onto the kitchen counters and they're attacking the blinds so I have to kind of Shut them away now when I go to work. But they don't seem to mind too much. I mean, most of the time, even when I don't shut them away, I come home to find them asleep on the stage, so I don't really leave the front room much anyway. I manage to part from them watching the dogs, but both cats sit in front of where we're going to put their bowls when it's feeding time. Oh. Oh, it's 3 a.m. in New Zealand. Wow, you're really far ahead, I want to say. Don't know how you're still awake, Joy. <laughs> uh, there screeches when the back opens. Oh, no. I'm going to say 3 p.m. 3 a.m. Sorry, well, it's night. I'm going to be asleep. <laughs> I still might set an early alarm for tomorrow. I'm not doing to work till midday, but I might set like a 7 a.m. alarm, alarm and try and do some work in the morning. Of like paint work. <laughs> Get some videos up or scheduled even. Maybe do some voiceovers and maybe up my paper, my painting paper, my paintings to start painting the watercolour comparison and then yeah see how we go. And as well I also want to try and do this week. Why is that not hiding your comment? It's very strange. That is not a choice. Oh no, so sorry. Hopefully you're not in too much pain or discomfort. I've been having, well, I've been wake up, waking up in the night quite a lot recently. Like I go to bed at 11 o'clock and then sometimes at like 3 or 4 a.m. I just randomly wake up. Perhaps it's an age thing. I might add some more essential oil to this one. This one can be prone to going mouldy a bit if I don't add enough essential oils to it. 
Um, do I have any in here? They might be in the kitchen. Oh, look, there they are. Oh, I think my paint must, no, it's not made too much of a run for it. That's the wrong one. That was the gamsol that I picked up. Don't want gamsol. Oh, oh, hi, that, that bastard. YouTube hates it when you yawn. Yeah, it sends to dip, which is really weird. There are some really random things that it, YouTube decides to censor. That's really moving. So yeah, it's um, PV19, but it's a very muted violet. It's a magenta violet. Yeah, it smells good. It's clove oil. I'm now, because of paint making, I'm quite desensitized to clove oil. Um, as in, like, I need quite a lot of it to make it smell for me. And I'm also kind of fed up with the smell of clover. <laughs> it was like when I did the Christmas scented ones at Christmas, I used like a sweet candy smelling one for the candy cane one. And it just smelled. Like the smell of it, I just got so fed up with it in the end. And my partner would always come by the pans and smell the pans and be like, oh, that smells really nice. I'm like, oh, it smells gross, get away from me. <laughs> I got so fed up of smelling it. So it was always under my nose for smelling it. I really do need to start using my own hand makers more. I mean, on my palette, let's have a look at my student palette. Oh. So, which one? So there are some on here that are handmade ones. Why are they going mouldy? It's really strange. I'm gonna to have to put some alcohol on it. So the ultramarine blue is a handmade one. That one is PP60, that's handmade. And that one there, which is PP17, no 16, PP16, that's handmade one. I'm gonna to have to put some alcohol on this. Don't know if I've got any alcohol. I might have to mix up some disinfectant, put some disinfectant on it because it shouldn't be going mouldy like that. I think it's because we had been had quite a lot of damp at the moment that in the last couple of weeks in the UK, like the last month or so, since sort of February, end of January really, it's been quite damp here. I've had quite a lot of mould appearing on my ceiling and walls. I've had to get the mould remover out on them, so I'm not surprised that these are going mouldy. They've been in the palette quite a long time and they're quite wet. But don't worry, it's not going to happen to my handmade paints because they're kept in the kitchen and they're kept in a dehydrator that goes on probably like every now and then to help keep them dry. Goes out the time already. I was really bad for cats. Oh, I didn't know that. Let's jar this one up. I think I'm on my last jar as well. No, I'm not this. I'm in the jar still. One more jar left. Two. No, two. There's one there. So let's put this in the jar. So yeah, I might just have some disinfectant to those colours, I think. I 
think I've got a jar of it still, so I might just put a little bit of that on top. Try and kill the bacteria that's in it. That is a problem when you get mouldy paint anywhere. Once it goes mouldy, it's really difficult to fix because the bacteria is already like living in it. You are having side effects of melatonin. Oh no. So yeah, this should hopefully make six half tans at least, <laughs> if not more. just about I fit all the paint in oh have I got drips I have got a drip so clumsy oh I need a I need one of these whoops just not the camera whoops That's clean. I need a lid. And I need to pick up that roll of kitchen roll that I just sent rolling on the floor. Right, let's put a lid on that. Um, in the lids are there. So yeah, there we go, we made the two colours, the golden green and the quinacridone, not quinacridone, the rose, midnight rose. So yeah, we're done for today. So thank you guys so much for dropping by and watching. I'll be streaming again next week. At the same time, I'll put an event on YouTube, hopefully a bit sooner than on Sunday, like I did today. But yeah, 2pm Sunday, um, UK time, that's 3pm Europe time. 9 a.m. New York time, if anybody curious. But yeah, thanks guys for dropping by. It's been great fun. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday and weekends. Have a good week, and I'll see you next weekend. Bye, everyone.